When I look back at some of the Danny Elfman videos, did you help direct any of those? Yeah, I've produced some, directed one, Private Life, although it was Danny's conception. He knows very much what he wants in the videos. Yeah, they're very creative, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you see a correlation, or do you, not, not a correlation, but do you see the difference in, let's say, music videos from the 80s and 90s compared to now, in terms of there's production value wasn't there maybe as much, but the story was there? Well, a story is very important in a musical number or a video. Uh, great uh, videos have a beginning, middle, and end, so do great musical numbers. Going back to Chicago, which had great serviceable music, but it had brilliantly choreographed dance numbers that had a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, extraordinary, extraordinary. Okay, Moulin Rouge, unfortunately, what they did is they shot the tons of footage for the musical numbers, and then just shot, 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 shot. No beginning, middle, and end. You're bored by the end of the musical number. No story. Interesting. Just a bunch of images. What did uh, you think of Birdman? I, I liked it, and I'm a huge Michael Keaton fan. Mm -hmm. uh, he was still my, well, I loved him as Batman. Loved him as Batman. And I want to see him come back for Beetlejuice. They're talking about doing oh, a, oh, another nice. Beetlejuice. Nice. He was great in The Founder, too. I don't know if you saw that. I haven't seen it. Okay, about um, Ray Kroc, McDonald's. Founder was good. Didn't see that. Mm. But when you look at Birdman, um, is there anything about his character that strikes you? Well, it was a very different. He's one of those actors that can just do anything. Uh, you know, it was just uh, an iconic role mm -hmm. and not like anything he's done. But in terms of because you've been a film director, a theater director, was there something that got you about the film just because it's not necessarily the most happy of endings, but... <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> but without any spoilers, but, but was there a part of it that you could really resonate with or... I, I enjoyed the film, but it, it wasn't earth shaking for me. Mm, okay. It's just, you know, but I, I, I love the film. Sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, I have other films that are, you know, my top 10, my top 20. Oh, your top 10. What are they? I'd love to hear them. God, in a nutshell. Okay, Hitchcock, Psycho, uh, Scorsese, Casino. What's, what's the one with Raging Bull? Uh, Coen Brothers. Oh, brother, where art thou? David Lynch, Blue Velvet, mm -hmm. uh, Coppola, Godfather 1 and 2. Uh, you know, <laughs> the classics. You know, with uh, Hitchcock, I was watching a documentary and they were talking about how some of his sort of sexual repression mm -hmm. was able to show. Um, <laughs> it sure did in Psycho. My God. <laughs> Right, and yeah, so it, yeah. it, 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 uh, what could be a hindrance to some people actually on screen, and who knows what some of the stories were on set, but that it, that it really translated into amazing performances and just wanted to hear your take on it since you seem uh, very open. In, in, in... <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't describe <laughs> myself as repressed. Okay, right. <laughs> Uh, you know, and that's the thing is like, like how crazy or neurotic does an artist have to be and how does it translate through the work? Uh, I don't believe you really have to be crazy or neurotic as an artist. Uh, you can learn it in some method acting classes. I, I, I've learned tricks to make actors cry. Sure. I mean, he talked, they talked about how he didn't feel comfortable in his own body and maybe that he even used his weight as a way to kind of peep, keep people away from him, you know, but that there was something about that that then translated on screen because well, he was... I, I can relate to that. I, I need to lose 10 pounds if I'm going to get into this senior boxing division next year. Oh, I, I wasn't no, I'm joking. OK, I'm joking. yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't think you need to lose weight, but I wasn't going to. I'm just talking about you mentioned Hitchcock at the top of your list. Me, 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 me. And I just wasn't sure. No, he, he was a master. I, 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 and uh, I, I don't it's hard to get into someone's head. You know, and how it, it, to me that was the ultimate explosion of sexual repression. 
what was it was just like a perfect film sure oh the third man oh. is one of the top of my lists yeah that i can watch it over and over and over do you think there's there's people like orson wells still in this town today sort of this charismatic um i mean there's so many charismatic people today oh, but oh, here, here's going to get me into trouble <clears throat> Uh, Citizen Kane, to me, is the most overrated film of all time. Okay. Uh, brilliant cinematography. Uh, forgot the guy's name, but he actually shared his director credit with the cinematographer. Uh, God, what the hell was his name? Uh, Not Ilya Kazan. No, no, he, he did a... Uh, oh, Ilya Kazan, yeah, Ilya Kazan's one of my other favorite directors. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, but getting back to... Citizen Kane, okay, so he takes this brilliant cinematographer, gives him free reign, and does innovative shots, innovative editing, and has a really, really interesting film. But I have a simple test with film being great or comedy being funny. The film being great is how easy is it for you to turn it off? It is that simple. No rocket science. We've all got films that we don't want to turn off. We're late for the appointment, we want to keep watching. Those are our greatest films. I've never had trouble turning off Citizen Kane. I can't turn off Godfather 1 or 2. Uh, I, I can't turn off Scorsese's greatest films. I just want to keep watching. Uh, but just, it, it just, I don't know about you guys, but it, it just doesn't hold me. God, I love this shot, I love the editing, it's so innovative. There's genius going on, but I have no trouble turning it off. Sure. So it's not on my top 10 or top 20. How did you feel about Taxi Driver? Oh, uh, uh, top 20. Okay. Sorry, forgot about that. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, Raging Bull Taxi Driver, my God, so brilliant. So brilliant. What about, um, sorry, I wanted to say... I mean, I have modern films, I, you know, I liked... Uh, Liked Wonder Woman, liked Black Panther, uh, you know, Tim Burton, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands. Oh, yeah. Incredible. And some of my brother's greatest work <laughs> has been for Tim Burton. Yeah, so these are all on my list. What do you think the difference is between film directors, say, the, in the age of Hitchcock, maybe Scorsese, um, Coppola, you know, so we're, we're spanning a few, a few decades there, but compared to now, what's the difference? Is it just the, the rules that they have to play by in terms of there, there's such I, pressure? I, I mean, there's every generation has brilliant filmmakers and, and a lot of junk, you know, that time sorts it out. That's true. Time sorts it out. Yeah, because we're not really hearing about the ones that fell by the wayside back then, even though it was... Oh yeah, there were less to, filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We remember Ilya Kazan's on the waterfront, whatever, or uh, and what was a streetcar named Desire. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't think of the, you know we think of those, but we don't think of all the junk that happened in the nineteen fifties. Mm 